Welcome to the Register's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Uh, we're going to be talking about the numbers for March. This show is being taped in April. Our headline for the month was, The Jury Remains Out on the Spring Market. I'm going to talk about the numbers for the month. I have a great guest in the second segment of the show, uh, Jennifer Jewell of Keller Williams Realty, who is the current president of the South Shore Realtors. Um, and then we're going to talk about some of our county and colony history. So let's go right to the numbers. I, first uh, chart you're going to see is of sales of property. There were 540 deeds recorded in March, more than the 387 in February, still 26% less than last year's 725 deeds. Uh, year to date, we're down 26%. You see a image of sales for the last three months. Um, we have 27 communities in Plymouth County, one city, 26 towns, and you're going to see sales from Abington through Whitman. And every community has had sales every month. Um, the largest number of sales for the last uh, couple of years have been Plymouth in Brockton in that order. Um, you're going to see an image now of mortgages. Uh, most people use a mortgage when they buy property. Um, we've had a huge drop in mortgages because for many years people were refinancing their mortgages, but with the rates as high as they are now, uh, there's not a lot of people refinancing. So really it's just what we call purchase mortgages. There are 1,100 mortgages recorded in March, more than the 703 in February, down 49% compared to the 2,158 in March of last year. In year to date, we're down 53%. We have always followed foreclosures with great interest, particularly since the meltdown of 2008. Um, we were just coming out of a moratorium. It was a moratorium put in place because of the COVID issues. There, so there were only 11 foreclosure deeds in March of this year, more than the nine in February, more than the eight uh, last March, but up 36% year to date because we're coming out of that COVID moratorium. We you see it the greatest is in foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the first document we see at the registry that shows someone's in trouble, whereas a foreclosure deed means the property has been taken back by the lender, usually for failure to pay. Um, if you're in trouble on payment of your property, reach out to a federal housing counselor, a federal housing counselor as fast as you can and try to get a modification. There were 60 foreclosure notices in March, significantly more than the 42 in February, 54% more than the 35 last March. We're up 53% year to date. So again, if you're in trouble, having some difficulty, don't wait, take action right away. And the next uh, is a listing, again, of the towns from Abington and Whitman and they'll show foreclosure deeds in orders of notice in those towns. Once again, our larger communities, Plymouth and Brockton, have usually shown the largest number of foreclosure deeds in orders of notice. Um, just a couple quick things. We have a free property fraud alert. If you go on our website, PlymouthDeeds.org, and go to resources, you can sign up for it through an email. There was a story in the Boston Globe over the weekend that talked about property fraud. We don't see a lot of it, hardly at all, but if you put in that information for your property, if anything is recorded on your property, you'll get an email and you can know 
and check whether it's something that should have been recorded, like a mortgage discharge or somebody fooling around with your property. Um, we're doing a lot of e-recording. Um, this past month, we had over 75% uh, e-recording for the recorded land and over 65% for the registered land, the land court. Um, I'm wearing a special pin today from Donegal because Plymouth County is partnering up with Donegal County and Ireland in a sister county program to share information and resources. And um, I have a great guest coming on in the next segment, Jennifer Jewell of Keller Williams Realty, who is the current president of the South Shore Realtors. We'll be talking about uh, those organizations and Plymouth County real estate in general. So we'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Registered Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this show, we always have something educational. We've had surveyors, appraisers, commercial brokers, and a lot of real tours uh, because they're the ones that are out there in the community every day, and we love to have them share the information that they see with us. So I have a great guest on the show. I have Jennifer Jewell of Keller Williams Realty. Uh, she is the new president of the South Shore Real Tours. So you were inaugurated in January. Yes, thank you, John, and, for inviting me. And you've uh, had a few months under your belt. Yes. It's a different world, isn't it? doing something like this. It is, it is. Um, you learn the ins and outs of the realtor side of business and the association. You get to meet your members. Um, it's been a great honor. So before we get into the role of the South Shore Realtors and your training and all the things that you're involved in, let's talk a little bit about your day job. <laughs> well, so you work for Keller Williams Realty over in Southeastern? Yes. Why don't you tell us a little bit how you get in the real estate business? So I started um, at a great time during the recession in 2010. Um, got my real estate license and um, just took it off from there and um, became a real estate broker back in, I believe it was 2018. Right. Yep. And you've been working for Keller Williams for how long? Um, since 2017. Okay. Prior to that, I was at Jack Conway. Okay. In, out of Bridgewater. Sure. Yeah. yeah and, I've, and I've mentioned it before. I had a guest that works at your office a couple times, Bernie Hassan. Yes. So your, your organization is very well respected. Yes. No, Mr. Hassan is a wonderful gentleman. Uh, so let's go, go through a little bit about the South Shore Realtors before we talk about the current marketplace. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that organization. Well, it is um, for South Shore Realtors, it's the second largest trade uh, association in the state uh, for real estate. Um, we're located in Pembroke and we have a second location out in the Fall River region. And um, we're very thrilled. We have over 3,000 members. That's a lot. That is a lot. And I know that one of the things you do is uh, the pride of being a realtor, not just selling real estate. Yes, yes. Um, uh, real estate agents, um, and then there's realtors. The difference is that we have um, eth a code of ethics that we follow, um, and we count e um, keep each other accountable for that. And I know your organization does a lot of training. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, so we offer uh, many um, different options for everyone, and we do virtual, in-person events, um, hybrid, in classes for continuing education, um, for designations, and um, real new, uh, real, uh, excuse me, to become a real estate agent as well, opportunities. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, changes that have happened technology-wise in being a realtor. The, the, the software you use, the, uh, the, the, the fact that people can look at so much online before you even talk to them. You want to talk about those changes a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, there are, um, for the public, it's wonderful that they have the opportunity to look at the house, you know, see it virtually a lot of times and, you know, learn a little bit 
about the past history of the house. Um, hiring a real estate professional like Realtors, um, the agent is able to decipher information and um, help with the negotiations on that. Okay. And um, let's talk a little bit about um, our world that we're living in, living in the registry and Realtors and that it's a changed world from, from a few years ago. Uh, what is going on with inventory? What is going on in the, in the market generally? Um, I spoke earlier in the show how it was really busy for us in 2021, a little slower last year and this year. Um, the number of recordings on our end, which reflect the activity on your end, uh, has really, uh, come down a lot. For us, uh, some of the things you wouldn't see are the, is the refinance market that totally dropped out. But even in terms of sales, um, it's a slower marketplace. It is in some um, aspects. Um, with the interest rates being um, in the sixes right now, I believe it's about 6.27. Mm -hmm. um, each week it has been coming down, so that's great. Um, and what we've noticed is that um, applications have gone up for mortgages. So that's a wonderful thing okay. that the buyers are getting sure. back out there. Um, now that the interest rates have leveled a little bit. Um, but there, you know, there are people out there that are worried that, you know, they might miss out on an opportunity. We are seeing multiple offers still going on, maybe not 30 offers on mm -hmm. one property, right. maybe 10 to, you know, 10 right. to two. Um, but with a good real estate agent, professional um, negotiation skills and being creative is always helpful to getting your offer accepted. So uh, in this marketplace, I'm gonna ask you to give your best advice to sellers and then we'll go to your best advice to buyers at this time. Absolutely. It's a different marketplace. I want to start with um, sellers. Sellers, okay. For sellers, you know, um, you need to prepare your house. To be honest with you, you know, you have to have it show ready. Um, and uh, honestly, pricing is such an important factor in this market um, as well. So working with a good real estate agent that knows how to prepare the house, stage the house correctly, first impressions are everything. Even on the outside of the house, people love to do the drive-bys before they even go into the house. I believe it. Yeah, so that it's really important that you know, first impressions are everything, and that's what will boost up you know, potential price offerings. And you do, um, in order to set the price, you do comparative uh, listings and Comparative sales? Yes, absolutely. So we um, usually try to um, stay within a one to two mile radius. Sometimes on a, t a different home style, you know, we might have to go further out um, in, you know, studying the market and where it's trending. Um, you know, that's the best way to um, list the property, you know, at the correct listing price. Um, a lot of people like to list it a little bit over um, because they think about, well, we need to negotiate, but um, th usually what will happen is that it will eventually sit on the market for a little bit of time. So price adjustments, meant, price adjustments have to be changed and um, then we're chasing the market down. So let's, let's talk about um, best advice to buyers in this marketplace. Um, so for buyers, um, putting your best foot forward, um, the days a few years ago, probably about five or six years ago, you know, putting in, you know, an okay offer and then going in for, you know, negotiations, it's changed quite a bit. Um, we're also seeing where some of those contingencies, home inspection, appraisals, um, you know, those are the safeguards for the buyer. Um, it's up for the buyer to decide if waiving one of those contingencies is best for their situation. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that it's best, but I know I, people have done it. They, they definitely do. I don't usually recommend it, yeah. though. But it's up to that person's decision to make. So my biggest concern in all this has always been the difficulty for first-time home buyers. And I know there's a, there are a lot of great programs out there, but um, how do you approach someone when you have a first time home buyer 
come to you and look to do some kind of uh, uh, search. No, absolutely. So um, for I love working with first time home buyers. They were actually my favorite people to work with. Um, I honestly would like to sit down with them and have a consultation, you know, talk about the market, you know, in the areas that they're looking at, educate them. It's really important for educate your buyers and sellers on what is going on in the market um, and talk about, you know, what flexibilities and, you know, what you're willing to negotiate on and what is really important to you. What are your top three things? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, pre-approval letters. Yes. And how do you handle that with a first time or anybody that comes to you that um, wants to uh, Purchase property. Yeah, so it's really important. Um, a good real estate agent has a team of people behind them between um, mortgage, home inspectors, and professional stagers and photographers. And I usually highly recommend that you do get pre approved. Um, it just takes the um, guesswork. You know, want, you don't want to spend money eight hundred dollars on a home inspection and then find out that you are unable to afford the mortgage because of something that's in your background. So I always do encourage they they do go for a full pre-approval and even go through the underwriting process as well. And that just makes that buyer look that much stronger to the seller. So what percent of your potential buyers? have a pre-approval letter in place? Um, when I discuss it with them, they all decide that they're going to go ahead and do, take care of that. Right. right. Yep. And so let, let's look a little bit out into the future. I mean, we're, you know, coming, we're in the spring. Yes. Uh, hasn't really felt like that all these last few weeks, but um, th this is usually a busy time in real estate. And um, what are you seeing out there? Um, you're right. Um, the inventory isn't coming out like we've seen in the past. I think probably since 2020, we've had that late spring start, I feel like, every year for the last few years. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more out there. You know, sellers, they're a little bit worried about putting their house on the market and maybe losing that 2 3% um, interest rate they had at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and then selling... Um, their house and then having to start at a new one. But I always tell my clients um, that you are um, dating the rate you buy the home. So yeah. it definitely seems like the, the normal, and I say normal because I've been doing this for over 20 years, the normal uh, upsizing and downsizing has really uh, dropped off. People that um, normally would go from a smaller home to a medium-sized home and as the family grows or vice versa, uh, dropping down in size as your family um, goes off on their own has slowed down because of, is, are they scared of higher rates or scared to make a move or can't find a home? What are you running into the most as reasons for that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I am um, been surprised many times that people that you think that are going to downsize, they actually move into a bigger home. You know, um, I feel <laughs> that there's a whole generation of people. I think uh, the people that are in their 60s and 70s are not the same 60s and 70s from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they're definitely not looking to retire <laughs> into a smaller home. Um, they want to have their family around them, and it's really important yeah. so that they keep those in there, keeping their homes for that reason. Right. So let's bring out your crystal ball and okay. say where we're, we're going to go over the next six months or through calendar year 2023 yes. and see what you think may be happening in the future. Well, um, I'm hoping that we will see the interest rates. They are coming down just a bit. Um, they'll probably bounce between the high fives and the low sixes um, and stay probably in that area. So hopefully people will feel more comfortable putting their houses on the market and that the buyers out there will um, be out there purchasing the homes. Um, it's going to take some time. We have a shortage of homes um, of inventory. Um, that's due to the... Um, 
recession back in 2010 and 20, uh, 2008, where there was a, uh, the building stopped, so we're shortage of houses. So on top of that, over the years, and um, people not wanting to sell their house because they want to stay in there because of the interest rate being higher now, um, hopefully the interest rate settling will provide them a little bit of comfort to put their house out. So I know a lot of people, and you kind of insinuate this, is that our COVID experience has made some changes. Clearly, it's made changes in the work environment. Many people have worked from home and like it. Um, um, I know my, my children um, have worked from home and have worked um, in the office, uh, not st straight time in the office anymore. Right. It's a different world. Yeah. So it's a different world in real estate too post-COVID, you're saying. Yes, absolutely. Um, people, that's the one thing we're noticing a lot of people coming from the city of Boston, moving out to the suburbs, um, and they're able to work from home three or four days a week and then have to go in. And the commuting time for them, they don't mind that longer distance of commuting um, to get the right house for themselves, you know, and usually having an office space is really important to them within right. the house. Yeah, I, I've heard that. A lot of times that's what people are looking for, that extra room to set up. Yes. In some cases, two, two jobs in the, in the house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. So can you share with someone out there that may be interested in joining your organization how to contact your organization? Thank you. Um, so our website is www.southshorerealtors.com. Our phone number is 781 826-5139. You can also reach us via email at info at southshorerealtors.com. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you for being a guest on the show. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Great. So I want to thank Jennifer Jewell for the great job she did in talking about our current real estate market, her role as a realtor, and the organization that she proudly leads for 2023, South Shore Realtors. Um, a lot of people that are professionals know the benefits you get out of your professional organizations and clearly South Shore Realtors, the training they provide and the uh, pride they take in being Realtors is a great uh, organization uh, to, uh, to be part of if you're a Realtor or someone in the business. Uh, so thanks again for, for Jennifer's report. <clears throat> this month, we have a bunch of holidays in April, from April Fool's Day in the 1st, Passover started in the 5th, uh, National Tartan Day on the 6th. The first day of the Masters Golf Tournament was also the 6th. Um, Jackie Robinson Day the 15th, Patriots Day the 17th, <clears throat> and then Tax Day, uh, the taping of this show on the 18th, and Earth Day and Arbor Day later in the month. So we always try to connect some of our Plymouth Colony records to the holidays of the month. And clearly, anyone that watched the Masters Tournament uh, know how wonderful it is to see those beautiful greens and the budding trees. Uh, so we have a connection here in Plymouth County with the Masters. A man named Herbert Warren Wind was a world famous golf writer who grew up in Brockton, played at Thorny Lee Country Club, and he coined the phrase Amen Corner at Augusta National Golf Course. He was a very well known writer. He um, had the highest uh, awards, um, the Bob Jones Award, in which he won. Uh, from the American Golf Association. He wrote for the New Yorker in Sports Illustrated for decades. But his, among his many achievements is he is credited with dubbing Augusta's 11th, 12th, and 13th hole after watching Arnold Palmer play those holes so miraculously in the 1958 Masters. Um, he named those three holes Amen Corner, 
not from a prayer that allowed Arnold Palmer to masterfully uh, navigate those holes, but from a jazz song, Amen Corner, shouting in Amen Corner. So every year they talk about Amen Corner when you watch the show, and that's a great thing to realize. It's someone that came from Plymouth County. For our Patriot Day holiday, we're talking about the new Guinea, Guinea settlement at Potting Ways. It's a property on the Plymouth line, Plymouth Kingston line. Um, it's an important site in the Plymouth County African American heritage. Um, Potting Ways Cemetery um, was acreage, 94 acres actually, uh, lit, uh, allowed to be used by Revolutionary War soldiers, 94 acres. Um, so Cato, Howe, Kwame Quash, Plato Turner, and Prince Goodwin established a settlement there. There were soldiers transported to the United States from Guinea, Africa via Cape Verde. Um, it is a site that if you have not visited, is worth uh, going to. It is located on Route 80 in West Plymouth. There's a marble tablet memorializing the settlement and the graves of those previously mentioned African American veterans in foundations of the buildings that were there formerly. The property is listed on the National Register of Historical Places and protected by federal and state laws. Our last Plymouth colony record relates to Earth Day and Arbor Day, um, all related to a book that many people that studied environmental science would have read, Silent Spring. <clears throat> the story of Silent Spring uh, resulted from aerial spraying of bird sanctuaries near the home of Stuart and Olga Huckins in the Powder Point area of Duxbury. And it was a major point in America's environmental movement. Uh, the landowners were friends of a national acclaimed author, Rachel Carson, and she called that out. Uh, and she wrote a book about it called Silent Spring, which at the time was controversial because it called out uh, chemicals that were being used uh, to control um, different growth in, in shrubbery and greenery, and it was DDT, and it caused great harm to the natural environment. Um, many people credit Rachel Carson's book, again, written on a prop based on a property in Duxbury, Massachusetts, for being the impetus of the creation of the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, in today's climate change. And my last uh, notable record is a colonial record when the colonial court voted to fund education. The colonial court um, decided to promote education through what was then known as the early days of Harvard College. They wanted to help promote uh, the development of an educated person, particularly in the area of church and government. And they funded that through fishing on Cape Cod. So way back in the early 1600s, the colonial court was aware that you needed to promote education in the colony. And they funded it uh, so that people in the Plymouth colony would have the opportunity to get that education. So I want to thank Emma Reardon and Athena Grant for helping with this show today. This is my 150th episode on Brockton Cable Access. Uh, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards helped me put this show together. And we're sharing this information with people for what is for most people, their home, their most valuable asset. And we'll see you next month.